This is part three of section 11.6. So what do we do if our events are not mutually exclusive? And that's going to happen. So if we think back to chapter two, we had this formula where we were trying to find out the number of elements in a set and union it was or. So we're looking for the number of people that is in A or B. So that's the same as the concept we've been talking about. What we said was it was the number in A plus the number in B which that part looks exactly the same as what we were talking about with probability of disjoint sets. But then we have to subtract off what they share in common. Now, with, if these are mutually exclusive events, there's nothing in there. So basically you're subtracting away zero. Now to remind you why we had to do this, if we had a Venn diagram and we wanted to know how many things were in it completely, and this is my set A, and this is set B. I would count the number of things that's in set A. Then I would count the number of things that's in set B. And look right here, if there was anything in here, it was counted twice. So we want to subtract off at least one of those. That's what we're doing. We pick this up, we picked up that area once. When we do B, we pick it up twice, so we need to subtract one of those away. That's where this formula is coming from, okay? So we have the same essential formula here. So the number in A union B, that, which is the number in A or B, the probability of A or B, number in A, the probability of A, the number in B, the probability of B, subtract away the number in A and B, subtract the probability of A and B. These are very extremely closely related. It's just different notations because it's a different field of math. It's the same concept. Okay, now can you use this formula for mutually exclusive events? Yes. That's because the probability of A and B when it's mutually exclusive is going to be zero. So you're still going to have the same formula. Okay, so these are incredibly related. Let's work. Example problem. Suppose the math department of a college has eight male professors, 11 female professors, 14 male teaching assistants, and seven female teaching assistants. If a person is selected at random from the group, find the probability that the selected person is a professor or male. So first of all, I have to figure out how many people we're talking about total so that I know what my denominator for these probabilities will be. So the total number of people I have would be eight males plus 11 female professors plus 14 t male TAs plus seven female TAs, which gives you a total of 40 people. So 40 is going to be my denominator on these probabilities. Okay, so we need to figure out because a person can be both a male and a professor, these are not mutually exclusive. So we're gonna be using this formula. So first I need to find the probability that a person is a professor. Okay, so probability that we have a professor. Okay, this would be, there are eight males I could choose from and 11 females I could choose from out of the 40. So the probability that we pick a professor would be 19 out of 40. Okay, now for the probability that we choose a male. So how many males do we have? We have eight male professors, 14 TAs, not a double plus, 14 TAs, and that's all the guys so this is over 40. So this is 22 over 40. Now this will reduce, but since I'm gonna be adding and subtracting them, I'm gonna keep the same denominator because it's gonna make my life easier and then I'll reduce at the end. Okay, so I've got the probability of A, I've got the probability of B, now I need the probability of A and B. Okay, so how many male professors do we have? We have eight out of the 40. 
Okay, so now the probability that we have a professor or a male will be 19 over 40, the probability that it's a professor, plus the probability that we have a male, and then subtract off the number of males who just got counted twice, which is 8 over 40. And so add and subtract across the top, and you get 33 over 40, which does not reduce. So that is your answer. Okay, so part B. Let's find the probability that we have a professor or a female. And again, we have female professors, so there is some overlap. So we're, this is these are not mutually exclusive. We've already found the probability that we have a professor. I'm not going to redo that. I'm just going to copy it down here. That's 19 out of the 40. Okay, so the probability that we have a female. Okay, so that would be 11 plus 7, so that's 18 out of the 40. Notice one thing here, okay? We have the probability that male, probability of female. These, I should because it's, I could have just figured out the probability that it's not male. So that would be 1 minus 22 over 40, which gives me 9 over 20, which is the same as 18 over 40. This reduces to this. So that's one way you could have found that probability without having to to get it directly because you'd be using something you've already calculated. Okay, so now the probability of being a professor and a female, there are 11, so that would be 11 over 40. So the probability that we have a, a female or a professor Mathematicians are lazy, so I keep shortening things even more. Would be the probability that you're female plus the probability of a professor. And then subtract off the people who got counted twice. So what you get, you get, when you do this arithmetic, you get 26 over 40. which reduces to 13 over 20. Okay, so let's find the probability of having a teaching assistant or a female. And again, I've already done the female part, so I get to reuse that. So we just need to find the, the probability of having a TA would be how many TAs do I have? 14 plus 7 out of 40. So that would be 21 over 40. We have the probability of female right here. So now we need the probability of female and TA. So we can subtract that off. There are how many? 7 female TAs. So this would be 7 over 40. So the probability that we have a female or a TA would be the probability of female, which is 18 over 40, plus the probability of TA, 21 over 40, and then subtract off the people who were counted twice. And when you do that arithmetic, you get 32 over 40, which reduces to 4 fifths. Okay, so one more. The probability of having a teaching assistant or a male. Now we've already, we found already the probability that we have a male. We have the probability that we have a TA. So the only extra bit of information that I need is the probability of being a, a male 
and a TA. Well, there are 14 male TAs, so this would be 14 out of 40. So the probability that we have a male or a TA would be the probability that we have a male, which is 22 over 40, plus the probability that we have a TA, which is 21 over 40. And then we need to subtract off the people who were counted twice, 14 over 40. And that gives you, this is one for whatever reason I did not write down the number answer to on my other sheet of paper. So it's 29 over 40.